Welcome to this session about 5D Standalone and the new core. My name is Eva Hedfors and I'm Head of Marketing Communication at Ericsson's Business Area Cloud Software and Services. And together with me, I have, well, you have me, Eva, uh, Monica Setson, Head of Solution Area Core Networks at Ericsson. And we're going to be talking a lot about 5G. And the great thing is at the end of 2022, we exceeded 1 billion 5G subscriptions globally. And that means that 5G is not only the fastest G in terms of speed, but also adoption. Uh, our analysis of the top 20 5G markets show a positive revenue growth trend as well. And this has been done since 2020. Now, this is mainly uh, driven by enhanced mobile broadband, but also fixed wireless access. And for the most part, uh, this has been achieved through introducing the new 5G radio, but predominantly still leveraging the 4G EPC network, the non-standalone core. Uh, this has, of course, the benefit it's given the higher speeds, but for the new type of use cases that you typically associate with 5G, like a dynamic service differentiation or the low latencies at the edge, those can only be achieved if you actually introduce a new 5G core together with the 5G access. That's really the standalone network. And now I'd like you to look at the map here, because this map shows uh, the smartphones that are connected to 5G network. Now the red shows uh, the non-standalone connected and you see that that's dominating. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, the, the green part, which shows the standalone networks being connected and China being green because China decided to go standalone from the beginning. Now, if I filter out the non-standalone connected smartphones, you can see how the image evolves and you can see that of course, 5G standalone is now starting uh, to cover up more parts of our globe. So with 5G standalone and with that being rolled out, we can also see that we're creating a strong, powerful toolbox connected with uh, network slicing. This means that we can and our customers can offer tailor-made services both towards consumers as well as enterprises. And now if you add exposure into that toolbox, it actually opens up for the ecosystem to leverage the capabilities that we have in the network in order to create new types of UK use cases and the ability to monetize the network capabilities. And that, I must say, was the number one uh, discussion point at this year's Mobile World Congress 2023. It was really about monetizing the network now. Mm. And when you talk about monetization, I think there's one particular area that you need to, uh, to think of and address, right? Because we are currently in the process, you know, with the, together with the service providers, introducing these very powerful capabilities into the network. Uh, but the fact that we have the capabilities in the network, and even if we expose the capabilities, it doesn't automatically mean that an enterprise who could really benefit from these new capabilities into their unique business processes will get access to it. Now, there are many elements in the value chain that needs to come together. And in this really creating that glue or the marketplace where the enterprise that can benefit from the technology also have the, the business model and the technical solutions to actually get access to it. And that's why we from Ericsson have invested in the global network platform. And that's also why we did the acquisition of Vonage. It's really to help close some of these gaps in the value chain in order to really leverage 5G broadly for what it has been built for. I think what you're sharing right now, Monica, really shows that 5G is not just another technology, it's really the innovation platform. And we're gonna be seeing a lot of innovation happening that enriches our lives, uh, that changes the way that we do business and that creates more sustainable society for us. And that with use cases that I believe we can truly be monetized, which is of course exciting. So uh, 5G standalone is the starting point for this uh, innovation. Uh, so let's talk about more about the core of that innovation platform. Hmm. Yes, so with 5G core, you're really introducing several major changes in one go for the most part. You know, first of all, you have the new service-based architecture that we're bringing in with 5G core. Then I would say for many of the service providers, it's also the first time you introduce a separation of the control plane and the user plane and the packet core. And on top of this, doing it all cloud native, right? So clearly, you know, with the, the, the aim here is to get access to the new capabilities in the network and to get the flexibility and the speed that we would get of the, you know, the intent of the cloud native network. But we need to be honest to ourselves, it is fairly complex. 
we used to have a situation where maybe one virtual network function would consist of three different virtual machine, you know, types of virtual machines. Now in the cloud native world, we can have a CNF that consists of more than five, 50 microservices, yeah. right? It brings the benefit that, you know, you can scale on the microservice level. You can do patches and upgrades on the microservices level. So it definitely brings new capabilities and opportunities. But in order to master all of this, automation is key. You know? So from that perspective, there's a lot to focus on the whole continuous integration, continuous deployment. We have several of service providers to honestly today, I would think are, you know, the, the less often you have to touch the network, the better. So you might do an upgrade every 18 months. And here now we have an anticipation and a need to touch the network frequently in order to bring the new uh, functionality and also from a security perspective. So from our side, there's a lot of focus right now on how to improve and enhance the uh, automation of the software lifecycle management. And it's and what we see, there will, is really a need to go all in for this mm -hmm. because it's yeah. not only a technology change, this is really an operational transformation beyond the technology. And it did address both the platform, the process, as well as the people. Fully agree, but it's also exciting to see that 50% of all 5D uh, standalone live networks use our 5D core. And that we also been recognized by Gorkna in the third consecutive year as a leader in 5G end to end. So what's behind that success, Monica? Yeah, first of all, feel very proud, of mm. course, of achieving this. But I would say uh, a number of things. We decided very early to go all in on the cloud native on the 5G core. But not only that, we decided that it, you know, eventually, of course, you would want to have one core network and that needs to be cloud native. So it's both the 5G elements as well as the 3G and the 4G. Mm. This means that our customers now have taken different paths towards this new remote core. We have those who have decided to, to, uh, to start by, by leaving the 3G, 4G as is and introduce a new cloud native 5G core network. And then eventually we'll migrate the 4G network into the cloud native. We have others who've chosen the exact opposite that they have started with introducing cloud native on the 4G side to get that operational transformation going, and then would eventually add the 5G core capabilities. So what I think has resonated very well is the level of flexibility that we have by this given our customers for how you want to navigate the most optimal path for your specific business situation. And then secondly, I think seeing is believing, right? We have this dual mode core commercial since 2019. And I think this has also given us a lot of experience and insights that are very relevant also for our customers. So most service providers who are today considering to embark on this fairly complex you know, journey to bring 5G core, you do want the most experienced partner that you can get along on the journey. And that's where I see we're a low risk and an effective uh, time to market option for the customers. And I can only agree, and that was another very important topic that we talked to our customer about at uh, Mobile World Congress. They really wanted to understand our experience. So Monica, it's time for us to conclude. How would you like to do that? I'd like to uh, quote one of our customers uh, who's already done part of this transformation. You know, this was much tougher than I anticipated, but it was worth it. Uh, and I think it summarizes it well. And we do see that you know, automation will only become even more important uh, going forward, particularly also leveraged by capabilities as AI and ML in all of this. So I think just to get started with this whole operational transformation, I think it's essential. Mm. And I just say that 5G is that innovation platform and together with standalone network slicing, as well as exposure, you really have a toolbox to be able to launch new types of services, both towards consumers as well as enterprises and really monetize the capabilities that you have in the network. Going this journey is tough, but it's definitely worth it. So thank you so much. Thank you.